Welcome to the Two-Way Radio Show. I'm Rick Savoya. And I'm Danny Feimster. And this is the podcast about two-way radios for business and consumer communications. Today, we discuss the importance of an antenna and extending radio range and some top-of-the-line aerials that can maximize the range of your base, mobile, or handheld radio. We'll also take some of your comments and questions from our blog on our forum at twowayradioforum.com. Our show is sponsored by BuyTwoWayRadios.com, the source of two-way radios and radio accessories for businesses and consumers since 2002. BuyTwoWayRadios.com, your radio specialist. We receive a lot of questions about radio range. One question that we are frequently asked is, how can I get more range out of my two-way radio? There are a few ways to do this, but perhaps the best and easiest way is through the antenna. That's right, Rick. The uh, antenna is a critical component of the radio, and and it makes a huge difference, Uh, or potentially it could make a huge difference in the the type of range that you're receiving um, from your radio. Um, There's lots of different types of antennas, but no matter what kind of radio you have, there's usually some kind of external antenna option uh, or aftermarket antenna option uh, that you should consider. And uh, if you're not getting the range you want, the antenna is probably the first thing that you should take a look at. It's e- generally easy to upgrade, easy to, to change out. Um, and uh, there, there's a lot of different form factors and types of antennas that you can choose from. And a lot goes into to that selection. And there are those who may ask, well, why the antenna? Why specifically the antenna? Um, you have uh, the amount of power that is a factor. You have uh, where the radio is located, where you're located. There are a lot of factors involved in determining radio range. But uh, let's consider the fact that the antenna, out of all those things, the antenna is perhaps the most critical component of the radio. I mean, that's where that's where every, everything, the signal uh, goes through, comes out through it, gets picked up from it. That's the most critical component of the radio altogether. If you don't have an antenna on there, you're not picking up anything, and you're not transmitting anything, really. That's right. And you have a lot of different options for the antenna and a, a lot of different choices you can make. For example, um, it, the antenna can be dialed in for a very narrow frequency range. Mm-hmm. Uh, the antenna can can um, be set up to offer a lot of gain or very little gain. Uh, the antenna can be very long or very short. Maybe you want to choose a long antenna for the best range, or maybe you want to choose a shorter antenna for the um, most convenience, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a, a short antenna that covers a very wide frequency range would probably be the most convenient option for m- most people, but may provide the least amount of range. But if you're using your radio in a a very short range application, why not choose convenience over the inconvenience that a longer antenna would provide or an antenna that's dialed into a very narrow frequency range that you can't use um, as well for uh, a broader number of set of frequencies. I guess if you're new to antennas, I guess the question you would ask is, well, what d- does an antenna actually do? And re- in simple terms, the antenna converts the radio signals uh, to and from your radio into electrical signals that the radio can understand. And uh, that, that's pretty much what it does. And it sounds like a fairly simple component. And and it, it is in a way, but at the same time, there's a lot of complexity that goes into um, as you just mentioned a few moments ago, um, choosing the right antenna for the radio to to get the most range that you can. Yeah, there there are a number of factors that can be adjusted. And you're right, an antenna is a, a fairly simple uh, device to make. Um, but 
there are a few attributes that you have to tweak and the, that the antenna designer has to tweak and uh, to get the performance that they're looking for or to, to make the trade-offs that they're looking to make for their product. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see what uh, length. Um, length is usually related to the wavelength that the antenna operates on mm-hmm. and different wavelengths um, like half wave, quarter wave will, will have effects like whether or not a ground plane is required with the antenna um, or uh, what the signal looks like when it radiates from the antenna. For example, does the signal go up or does the signal go uh, out? Things like that um, affect the gain of the antenna. Uh, gain is sort of like a power multiplier. If you get a um, an antenna with a large gain, uh, the the antenna is going to have more power. But you can't invent power out of thin air. The way it accomplishes more power is by squishing that signal down Mm -hmm. to like a donut shape. So if you're standing right under a repeater with a high gain antenna, your signal may not go up to the repeater. It just goes out further. So there are so many considerations um, that go into building an antenna, designing an antenna. And Mm -hmm. as a a customer, when you choose an antenna, those are things you need to think about um, when you're looking at those specs and choosing the antenna that you're looking for. So... In a nutshell, the type, the height, the location, the quality of the antenna, those are all going to have a significant impact on the overall range of the radio signal. And that's why we carry so many antennas. If you go to our website at buy2wayradios.com, you will find a huge selection of antennas there from which to choose. And uh, that's the reason why, because there's going to be something for just about every type of radio and within each type of radio, uh, you're going to have a lot of different choices uh, that will uh, be sure to fit your specific need and your specific circumstance. And, you know, there are a lot of different types of radios out there. I mean, there are many, many different styles and types of antennas, and they're designed to perform different functions in various ways. Now, in this episode... Of the two-way radio show, we're going to focus uh, specifically on the vertical omnidirectional antennas, uh, the, the ones for base, mobile, and, and handheld radios that uh, you carry around with you. That's the one that we're going to really focus on in this episode, uh, because I mean, we could talk about antennas all day and barely scratch the surface. So we're going to kind of stick to that to that uh, little niche right there. Oh yeah, we could, we could talk about any one of those particular niches. Um, for an entire episode, base antennas. Oh, that, that's a big topic. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, handheld radio antennas are uh, also popular. Seems like a, a lot of our radio sales people are also buying a additional an additional antenna to go along with the radio. Mm-hmm. Uh, like that, we just um, started carrying a new Mellow Wave Bandit G um, that has really taken off. And um, it seems to be very popular and well-reviewed, even though we've only had it for around a month. Mm-hmm. But uh, that's a handheld antenna. We um, recently started carrying the Comet brand of antennas in addition to some of our other brands like Diamond and um, Tram. Uh, big brand. Who else do we sell for, for antennas? Anyway, Comet's new. Um, we picked up the Comet line. Uh, excited about that. Well, we touched on the importance of a properly tuned antenna. And we talk about properly tuned, we're talking about an antenna that is specifically made to cover the specific band and frequency range of your radio. And uh, and that's very, very important. I mean, you can't uh, really uh, stick a, a VHF antenna on a UHF radio and expect a great performance on it, or even uh, when you're we're talking about uh, frequency ranges, you know, a frequency broad frequency range of maybe 400 to 480 um, might be a little bit too broad for a radio that needs something more specific, uh, like a GMRS radio in the 462 to 467 range. So, um, having a an antenna that is more 
precisely tuned for what your radio covers and supports is actually going to go a long, long way towards increasing range for your radio. Yeah, what you see with um, the ranges that an antenna is specifically built for is uh, essentially what it means is that the SWR will be lower mm -hmm. for that frequency range that the antenna is built for. And with a low SWR, that means less of the power of your um, radio is reflected back into the radio and is actually going out to the signal um, and giving you more range. If you have an antenna that's poorly tuned for the frequency you're trying to transmit on, then some of that power is going to reflect back into the radio instead of going out and contributing to the range. And um, if if it's way out of tune and you're putting a lot of power into the antenna, it can even be dangerous. It can, uh, that's how you could potentially blow the finals on uh, your radio um, by using an improper antenna or poorly tuned antenna for the frequency you're using it for. Well, let's back up for just a second. You mentioned SWR. What does SWR stand for? Uh, standing wave ratio? Yes, yeah, standing wave ratio. I didn't even check the notes. <laughs> And as you just mentioned, what that really means is that the signal that you're sending out, as you just explained, the signal that you're sending out uh, through the antenna, you want as much of it to go out to the antenna as possible and very little, uh, if any, coming back, reflected back to the, uh, to the radio. So you want it going out to the antenna, not coming back to the radio. Um, think of it, I guess I, sometimes I think of it as a backwash. When you're, when you're, uh, uh, you know, you're sending water through a pipe or something, you don't want, you don't want uh, a bad backwash and you don't want that, uh, that water pressure coming back to you. You want it all going out the pipe, but because the more of uh, that water pressure that you have coming back, um, th the less you're going to get out there, first of all. And uh, also the greater the chance that you're going to have a problem uh, from the origin point. If that all that water is coming back and at a, at a high pressure, that's, yeah, that's a good analogy. I like that. I like, yeah, I just came up with it myself, right? It's <laughs> a good one. I'll remember that. So, um, so that's basically what standing wave ratio is, and that's that's why you want to have a low SWR. Now, what's what's uh, typically a uh, an optimal SWR ratio? Uh, one to one is optimal. Uh, right, but yeah, rare. Mm -hmm. If your antenna is providing you a uh, 1.5 or less SWR, a uh, one to 1.5 or less, then that's something that uh, you're. It's going to be great. Fine, mm -hmm. you know, work with uh, work with your frequency. You're not going to have any issues with it. The, the lower or the lower that number is, the better. Now, I know of some uh, some radio aficionados who really spend a lot of time, they invest a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of uh, well, money on equipment measuring these the SWR on their antenna. So they buy a new antenna for their rig and they put it up. One of the first things they want to do is to check uh, the SWR, make sure it's as low as possible. And I know some of these some of these folks they get really really into the minutia of this and say, well, if it's not if it's less than one point three, uh, I'm doing good. Others say it's got to be as close to one point one, you know, one to one as possible. And if it's a one, uh, one to two, or one to three, it's they're just not happy with it, and they're going to say, "Well, you know, this antenna is is not up to par," or to, you know, whatever. And um, I don't think you have to get that. I, I'm trying. I'm trying not I, to I'm be. Say... <laughs> I'm trying not to be. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, not, I, not trying to put anybody mean, down on this, but I don't think you have to get that into the minutia of this. We have gotten phone calls from, you know, um, I got this antenna from you guys and um, I've been working on optimizing this and 1.1 uh, 1 .1 is the best I can get it. I just can't get to the perfect one to, to want. Well, there, there's so much that getting that last uh, tenth of a, a point or whatever can can really take a lot of effort and it may be the way your coax is coiled yeah. or the the weather outside or 
um, you know, a piece of metal that's uh, nearby that that's um, causing some interference or, or something. The coax is another um, aspect of this that you just mentioned, and we covered this in a previous episode of the Two Way Radio Show. We talked about uh, using the right coax to improve uh, per, uh, improve the performance of your antenna, and um, uh, I think we had John on at, at the time. And he was discussing that. Uh, and that's that's a great, great show to go back and listen to if you're uh, considering uh, the coax factor there. Talking about the antenna feed line going there. That's, that's a huge factor in the SWR and performance of the antenna overall. But getting back to what you were saying, uh, when you're, you're talking about um, a number of factors, not just the coax, but also uh, other things involved. Any anything along the line that can impede the um, the performance, or or might uh, cause a little bit of of um, I don't want the words backwash. <laughs> using my my uh, water analogy again, uh, you know, it could be connectors. Uh, it could be it could be a few things. The, the biggest problem I've ever ran into is, is with handheld radio antennas. Mm -hmm. Customers will get a like a nano VNA mm -hmm. or um, a, a SWR meter for connecting handheld antennas, but handheld antennas are notoriously difficult to measure the SWR yeah. on. Um, in particular, uh, and we've had discussions with manufacturers about this and. Um, like when a customer comes to us and says, I have an SWR that's higher than they expect, we'll try to figure out what's going on. But um, oftentimes it is these handheld radio antennas that are designed for a use um, other than the way that they're being measured. Mm -hmm. For example, if you're using a quarter wave or five eighths wave handheld radio antenna, those antennas require a ground plane. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're designed, uh, the, the length of the antenna for the, the frequency they're optimized for is taking a ground plane into account and your body is, or the radio is the ground plane mm -hmm. when you're holding it or when you have it clipped to your belt. So when you're measuring the SWR on that antenna, the radio is missing and you're not holding it in the same way you would be holding a good the point. radio in, very in good the point. real world. So, so you, you end up with a different SWR reading than the manufacturer is, is designing for. And a, a lot of times the, the handheld antennas don't make a lot of difference anyway with the SWR because there's so much variance based on that ground plane. And you're not talking a ton of power going into the antenna. It's not a 50 watt radio most of the time. Where you really get into the concerns on that is if you're uh, using a mobile rig or a base station, and you've got a lot more power going through there. That that's when you really have to to be a little bit uh, more careful with it. You have to be a little bit more concerned about it. But even so, say well, you you have more control in those yeah, situations yeah, too because your 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 base antenna is going to be in the same location all the time. Mm -hmm. If you have a ground plane, it's not going to move. Um, same thing with a vehicle. If you have a an antenna mounted on your vehicle. If it's on a, a lip mount on a trunk mm -hmm. or a mag mount, uh, you, you can play with the location to get the best SWR reading. And then the antenna is not going to move. Generally, you're going to find one spot that's going to work well, and that's where you're going to use it all the time. So that those are good cases mm -hmm. to do SWR measuring. And I'm not saying don't measure the SWR on your handheld antenna. I'm just saying understand that you're going to see variance and based on the wavelength of the antenna, you might see um, more or less consistency in the measurement that you're getting. For example, a half wave antenna doesn't require a ground plane. So generally with a half wave antenna, you get a more consistent reading yeah. uh, when you're measuring the SWR on it. And when you're talking about the mobile and base station antennas, there are a couple of other factors of that that can work against you uh, in particular, Say, for instance, when you're mounting an antenna on a truck or something, there are uh, ways that you can improperly mount the antenna or ways that the feed line can be uh, improperly uh, connected 
or maybe that it's improperly grounded or not grounded at all in some way that can actually make the um, make the whole situation worse. Yeah, one thing that I see on mobile antennas for vehicles is um, I mean, usually when you're buying a mobile antenna or a mobile mount, you've got 15 feet of coax mm -hmm. is typical, um, and it already has a connector on the end. Well, that's great, but if you're measuring SWR and you want the SWR to be as perfect as possible, usually 15 feet of coax is too much. Mm -hmm. You're not going to use that much to go from the antenna location to the radio. So the, the thing to do, if you're looking for the best setup, is to cut that coax cable yourself and put a new end on it so the length is more precise for what you need. Mm -hmm. And also you end up getting less loss in that case and um, because shortening the cable, uh, the longer the cable, the more loss you're going to have in signal going out. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. if you if you have six feet of cable just wound up in a coil sitting on the floor or tucked under a seat or, or something like that, that's hurting your SWR and it's causing loss, which yeah. – most people in most cases are never going to notice and it's going to be perfectly fine. And there's nothing wrong with coiling your, your cable and uh, leaving it under your seat. But if you're looking for the best performance and the best SWR, those are a couple of things that, that um, will get you some bang for the buck. Well, we've also had customers that have called in with issues uh, with, uh, installing an antenna on in you know in their truck or in their vehicle where, wherever it is, and th they've had really really poor performance not just because of the feed line but because of anything else that may have gotten uh, in the mix inadvertently like maybe uh, connectors there that uh, weren't properly uh, sealed or or insulated if the feed line is not properly insulated or the antenna itself or anything like that where it comes into contact with something that it shouldn't be coming in contact with or uh, moisture or, or you know getting wet uh, in in the vehicle or you know in, in an area where there shouldn't be any moisture and that can also be detrimental to the whole thing yeah that, that is a big problem but I see that particularly with base antennas yeah. when you have an outdoor antenna, if you don't waterproof those connectors, you're you're just asking for trouble. You should use heat shrink or um, Messi and Poloni makes a great product. Oh, yeah. um, I forget what is that called? The silicon it's, uh, uh, seal? Yeah, it's the 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 I think it's a silicon seal, and it's it's uh, they they have a couple of different products that do that, and uh, they work great, and they're very very highly rated, and uh, it, they're also very very easy to. Um, to install, to to uh, you know, put on on the uh, cable and in the in the connectors, very simple process, really. So it's um, yeah, ab absolutely. It's a little more dope. expensive than heat, like more expensive than like heat shrink would be, mm -hmm. but um, it's super easy to um, to use, and um, you know, you know, you're getting a good seal with their product. You don't have to. There's no guesswork. Like did I. Did my heat gun miss a spot or something like that? Well, let's talk about a couple of the antennas that we carry uh, that are specifically uh, respected and in high demand right now uh, that a lot of uh, our customers are using. And uh, they uh, they really, really like how the antennas perform. The first one is Comet. We've recently become a Comet dealer and an authorized dealer for Comet Antenna. And one of the reasons we did was because they were very, very highly recommended uh, from our customers, very highly rated antennas. So we, we carry a whole line of these uh, for mobile, base station, and uh, we, we carry a couple for the, uh, the handheld radios as well. Um, uh, tell, tell us a little bit about uh, some of those common antennas, Danny. Uh, well, we decided to carry i believe most of the antennas that they make mm -hmm. and uh like you said there's a variety um of base antennas mobile antennas for vehicles and some handheld antennas um for a handheld radio we they mostly um are producing antennas for the ham um mm -hmm. audience um 
so they, they have a ton of products for, for amateur radio, but they also have some antennas for business, uh, which we carry. And they've recently begun making um, antennas specifically tuned for GMRS. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have a huge GMRS selection at this point, but they, uh, I think they just added a new base antenna for GMRS just yeah. a few weeks yeah, ago. Did. And um, we've been selling that. Uh, let's see. That's, that's the CA-GMRS. The base and uh, repeater antenna. And, uh, it works for base and stations is, and repeaters, uh, yeah. It's $105, 5.5 dBi gain uh, with an SO239 connector. I believe that mm -hmm. comes with a ground plane as well. And um, if I remember correctly, that's about four feet long. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a typical fairly, for fairly tall antenna. antenna. And you can make yeah. it even taller by, you know, mounting it on, on your own mount somewhere that, that you can actually add to that as well. There is a... Uh, well, there are some super long ones. I mean, oh, they yeah. have a, yeah. a ham one that's a GP9NC, mm -hmm. I believe, which is uh, 16 feet 9 inches. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's 11.9 dBi gain. Uh, and uh, that, it, I believe it's three sections. Yeah, that it, it comes with three sections. It's, it's a pretty heavy duty antenna. And this is for somebody who's really, really serious about their base stations. <laughs> yeah, and that's a big commitment. A 17 foot antenna is yeah. um, pretty large. You got to really plan that out. Mm -hmm. And they also have a, a tri band antenna, which is pretty good. I mean, that's something that we, we've carried a couple of tri band antennas. Uh, but uh, th there haven't been that many out there. It's it, they're kind of hard to find sometimes. At least a, a decent one, and uh, we found one with the comet here. That uh, is the um, CX three three three. Yeah, CX three three three. It does two meter, two twenty, and seventy centimeter. And this is designed to be a base station and a repeater antenna as well. Yeah, that one surprised me how well it sold so far, um, but. I guess it shouldn't because you do see more and more mobile slash based uh, type radios that are tri band, in including 220, mm -hmm. um, along with 70 centimeter and two meter. They're becoming uh, more like popular used to, now, I think. Yeah, it seems like most of those um, 50 watt mobiles used to just be two meter, 70 centimeter, but um, you see 220 on there yeah. um, a little more often now. And, and a few more quad banders as well. Uh, that's uh, those are uh, uh, you know quad quad band mobiles and uh, base stations. I think those are uh, in fairly high demand these days. The, and the, once again, the problem is coming up with uh, an antenna that'll work for all those. You don't have to keep swapping out antennas. Uh, I remember a, a ham club I was a member of some time back. They had uh, one that uh, covered uh, uh, multiple bands, and they had to have a device on the wall. Where they could, if they were going to to swap out to different um, to uh, different bands, that they would have to to uh, switch over, you know, to two between two and three different antennas, depending on which band they were on, and, and which, which I think was was kind of cumbersome. But you know, what are you going to do? You can't have one antenna that's going to cover every single band. Uh, but you know, a uh, comet's come pretty close with a couple of these. Right. Uh, those um, antennas, coax switch, mm -hmm. uh, we sell a couple of those, I believe, yeah. from uh, Diamond, I want to say, makes them. And yeah, maybe Comet makes some as well, but I'm not sure that we carry those. There's a lot of times that's your only option if mm -hmm. you go multiple frequency ranges. I guess if you're doing more HF with ham, you'll get a, an antenna tuner. Um, but um, Maybe with the higher frequency ranges, the coax switch is the best option, even though they, they do introduce a little loss into the mix. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's kind of hard to keep a few of these common tenants in stock as well because we, 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 we carry them and, and, and they seem to go pretty quick as soon as they come into stock. They seem to we be very popular. Have carried them. We should have carried them years ago. Yeah. I mean, I'm surprised at, at how well they're, they've been selling. Mm -hmm. But we have another uh, line of antennas. Uh, of course, we've been carrying uh, them for a couple of years, uh, the Mellowave brand. And uh, most of uh, up until now, they've been pretty much for the mobile base uh, radios. But now we have a new one out here 
that is specifically designed for handheld radios, and this is the Bandit G. Uh, let's let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah, the the Mellow Wave line. You're right; it has been around for a couple of years. Mainly, it's been a uh, mounts line because mm -hmm. there's maybe ten different mounts that Mellow Wave have. And, and what's great about them is the coax that they use is a better quality coax. So there's less loss yeah. when using a Mellow Wave mount than with other brands typically with uh, other brands will use RG 58, I believe, whereas the mellow wave uses a, um, an LMR 200 type coax. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, they have a couple of antennas, the overlander and the shadow, overlander which are popular, very, very popular. Yeah. The shadow as well. Uh, but now we have the bandit the G new one. This is, uh, yes, this is amazing. That, that brings me to the bandit. When did we come out with the Bandit? About, about a, month a month ago. ago. Is that when it was yeah, launched? About, about, about six weeks ago now. Uh, yeah, this has been, it's a handheld radio antenna. I actually have one. It's fairly long, but the reviews are that the performance is fantastic on this. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we see as well. It's rather long, but it's it's super flexible. Mm -hmm. I think. We've made a yeah. couple videos. That I've got one. That off. I've got one uh, right here as well. I have a I have a Mellow Wave Bandit G on uh, on this brand new KG S sixty five G, the yellow one, <laughs> and uh, which we just launched yeah, recently. Just launched, Get yours. Yeah, this is, this, this quick is, because it looks like they're going to be out of stock before long. Yeah, we've really uh, we've probably blown through those pretty quick. But look look how flexible this is. This is <laughs> hit the hit the mic with it. But uh, it's pretty amazing. And uh, the, the early reviews we've received from customers on this is that they think it outperforms just about every other, every other handheld antenna out there. That's what I've heard so far. I've seen yeah. quite a few reviews that say that, like, oh, I was using this other antenna that's similar, mm -hmm. and uh, this one beats it. I've seen that quite a few times. A few YouTubers have made videos on yeah. it. Yeah. Well, you know what? We have... Um, we have a short video that we released on the uh, Bandit G. We can play it right here on the show. Let's uh, let's let's play that. So the introductory uh, uh, commercial video on the uh, on the Bandit G. Roll it. Okay, and that's the Bandit G. Good work on that, Rick. Oh well, actually, that was that was Tommy's. Uh, mostly Tommy's done. I, I I tell you what I did was I I came up with a general idea. I put together a little storyboard, and then I just handed it to Tommy. And uh, Tommy's our video guy, and I I just said here. Uh, uh, make it <laughs> he just took it all and he just created it so it was all it was all pretty much tommy that that did that oh he, he did, did a good job, job on that one it. yeah but uh we uh have so far received a lot of great feedback on the bandit g it's been getting it's been getting five star reviews uh pretty much across the board so far and um yeah i mean i've used it myself uh you know hitting the uh, local repeaters and uh, everyone tells me that that I come through loud and clear full quieting on it and it's uh, just just uh, really it's been a fantastic antenna actually and no matter what I put it on of course I've been putting it on I have it on this x65g right now but I've also been using it primarily on the uh, the ocean uh, kg 935g plus and uh, it's been, uh, or actually, I think I was using on the original 935G 
as well. And um, uh, just great performance all the way around. Yeah, I really like how thin and flexible it is. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't seem as heavy, I guess, as some of the other half wave, longer uh, style antennas like this. Mm -hmm. So you still get good performance, but it makes the, the radio feel a little lighter. And um, it also doesn't really bend. Like it, it, you would expect that, oh, you, I'm going to screw this antenna up if I, you know, mm -hmm. bump it into something because it's so thin, but it always bounces back. I mean, it maintains its shape very well. I, I wish I knew what was in there that <laughs> causes that to happen. <laughs> it, it, Ben's better better than I do. I mean, my age, you know, I I don't I'm, I reach down to pick up the antenna, and it's uh, I, I worry about putting my back out. But we have them. We're they're in three different uh, connectors. We have one in the SMA female, which is uh, which is on this radio. We have one on the uh, we have for, one for the SMA male, and we have one for the BNC the, the BNC antenna. Uh, so we have. Um, we have the, all the different uh, connectors for it, and uh, and this is uh, at the moment. This is a GMRS only antenna. Yeah, GMRS this is the only. Bandit G. We may see a Bandit H in the future. We'll see. Coming full circle again. The antenna is one of, if not the most crucial components of a radio. And while the type of radio. And the wattage and the elevation that you're at and the environmental factors, they're all important things to consider. It really is the choice of antenna that ultimately determines the overall quality of your transceiver signal. So um, something that uh, that's important to consider. I guess you're right. If you you can be as high as you want to be, but if you have a, a poorly tuned or, or terrible antenna, or what you're trying to accomplish, you know, you're probably not going to get your signal out the way you would want. All right. Well, uh, that's our uh, introduction to uh, antennas there. Any other discussion on it? Um, no, I don't think so. I feel like um, maybe I, I was out of order on some of this, but uh, so was I. You know, I feel like <laughs> we came full circle uh, at the end and, and got it all. Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think we got <laughs> at least it. I, I, got I like it. to think so. Yeah. All right, well, we have some comments and questions from our blog and our forum at twowayradioforum.com. The first one comes from Jesse, and uh, Jesse wants to know, I just lost my T800 Motorola power slash volume knob. Where can I find a replacement part or another part that can do the job? And that's from Jesse. Wow. Um, hmm. Hmm. Yeah, the T we're talking about the Motorola T800. That's uh, that, uh, that is a... Um, Talk about the talk about series. A nice radio, a nice little radio, by the way. Very low power, but nice radio. And uh, you know, I don't know where replacement knobs are available. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not something that we've ever carried or even seen on like a price list for Motorola. I mean, it it may. Yeah. It, I bet you that. The volume knobs are the same across the the whole line. I'm trying so to remember right one off. Hand. It's just a, oh. a little, you know, round shaft with a, a flat edge on one side. So yeah. I bet if you had another or old defective Motorola, you could probably rip the knob off of it and use it. I, I maybe yeah, I'm trying to something what it looks available. Like. To, um, I have a pair I of T800s smooth. on 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 my shelf at the office. I just uh, right offhand can't remember what it looks like specifically. And no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to pull the those off and send them out. <laughs> I need them on those. If the radio is working. Probably. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I wonder if the um, if the customer has a 3D printer, something like this might be available there on some go. of the 3D print sites. There you go. That's There's an idea. Something to look at. There you, uh, there you go. It's an idea, or find someone who has a 3D printer and see if they can uh, 3D print one for you. I think that's actually probably uh, not a bad, not a bad uh, suggestion at all. Uh, let's see. Our next one comes from Alan, and um, Alan is uh, he's commenting. Remember, we uh, a couple of episodes back we uh, were talking about uh, how the FCC said you can't link repeaters. 
No, no repeater linking. And oh, are we still getting feedback oh, on we've that? We've been getting, we'll be getting all kinds of feedback on it. But um, well, Alan's asking, what about linking GMRS repeaters together using RF? Other radios would that be legal? And of course, we were talking, and that's that's from Alan. Of course, we were talking about um, uh, linking repeaters through a, a phone network or any other kind of network. But what about linking them together using RF or other radios? Um, and and I, he clarifies down here a little bit. He says, I'm talking about having two repeaters, one on mountain A and the second repeater on mountain B, then hook them together by means of other radios. Since they're both on the mountaintops, they can easily talk to each other. I might not be explaining it exactly right, but this should give you an idea of what I'm trying to say. And that's from Alan. Hmm. Any thoughts on that one, Dan? I'm trying to uh, imagine that. Like, I'm trying to think what would the problem be. Are are both repeaters in this scenario using the same frequencies? So you would yeah, be tough. essentially have a relay radio in the middle, like uh, that receives from one repeater and then rebroadcast out on the input frequency hmm. at another. Like, Maybe radio f uh, capable of, of cross band. Um, uh, I, I don't know. That, I, I, I think it would be that. possible. Yeah. If, um, if they were, on, I think it would complicate it if they're using the same frequency. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely would. Definitely would. All right. Well, uh, Roy, um, oh, Roy has a question about the Bandit G. And Roy wants to know, I have an Ocean KG905G, which Mellowway Bandit G should I buy? And that's from Roy. That's an easy one. Oh, I like the easy ones. Yeah. That would be the SMA female. All yeah. of the Ocean GMRS radios that we sell have an SMA male connector. So if you, you get a, an aftermarket antenna for them, you need to look for an SMA female. And we have uh, our last one actually comes from YouTube. This is a, a YouTube uh, comment. And this is from Ad Craziness 1501. And they're responding to episode 194 of the Two Way Radio Show. We were introducing the KGS65G radio. Ad Craziness uh, says, I think your decision to drop the charge cradle and go strictly with USB C charging will end up being a decision you look back and say, we should have done that a long time ago. And that's from Ad Craziness 1501. Uh, and I I agree with him. <laughs> well, I, I ask my sales staff um, a couple of times a day, like, what kind of feedback are we getting on the S65? Just because we're still early and um, we, we, you know, we need to, if, if we need to do a firmware update or something like that, I'm trying to collect feedback. And there have been no negatives that I'm aware of on the dropping of the, the drop in charger. Yeah. Seems like everybody's just, just happy with the USB C charging being included. Yeah, I don't and, um, think anyone's I, missing it really. I don't see, uh, I don't see any, I, I don't believe I've seen any orders come through with, a drop-in charger added as a an accessory. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's really not important to people and everyone will be happy with a lower price and USB-C only. I like the USB-C personally. I mean, it's, it's so many of my devices already use it. It's, it's, it's amazing. You think we'll see more uh, radios uh, from Ocean being released that way in the future? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, could be. I, I with, what we're doing with Ocean, it they kind of give us the option on what we want accessories we want to um, be included with the products, mm -hmm. and um, so it, it's really up to us. And I don't see any reason why going forward we would continue with the drop-in charger mm -hmm. um, if if it's a USB capable radio, which uh, you would think all of them in the future are going to be. All right. Well, I guess that does it for our comments and questions in this episode. Send in your comments and questions for Danny or myself to show at buy2wayradios.com. If you want to know more about today's topic or about two-way radios in general, check out our forum discussions at twowayradioforum.com. And of course, as I always mention, you can subscribe to the Two-Way Radio Show directly from our website at twowayradioshow.com or just about 
here just about anywhere you can find a podcast. And you can also subscribe by email. Click subscribe by email on the Two Way Radio Show podcast page at twowayradioshow.com. Enter your email address and you'll get the latest episode of the Two Way Radio Show as soon as it's released. All right. Well, I guess that does it for our uh, show in this episode. Uh, Danny, before we go, any final comments? I think we got it. Okay. You don't want to talk about it in two weeks? (laughs) Tell me some more. I'm sure there's a there's a lot we left out. Oh yeah, we could go on for for many many episodes mm-hmm. on antenna specifics. Yeah, oh, but maybe we can pick I don't it up know again if later. Will listen to it. We, we our, our listeners would drop off because it, it, the more technical it gets, the more tune out we get. I think. <laughs> Look, if you uh, have any other questions about antennas, give us a call or uh, send us an email. If there's something that you want us to cover specifically in a future episode that we didn't really cover related to antennas or anything else, just uh, drop us uh, an email at show at buy2wayradios.com. All right, well, today's show is sponsored by buy2wayradios.com. Whether you're searching for two-way radios for general consumer or business use, buy2way radios can help you find the best solution for your needs. Give us a call at 1-800-584-1445 or enter our live chat at buy2wayradios.com. Well, everyone, as always, thanks for listening. And until next time, for the Two-Way Radio Show, I'm Rick Savoya. And I'm Danny Feemster. And we're out. 